Chris Redfield. Jill Valentine. Barry Burton. Rebecca Chambers. Albert Wesker. Resident Evil. Hello everybody, this is Anthony John Agnello, Senior Social Editor at Games Radar Plus. Two decades! That is 20 whole years of hoping this isn't Chris's blood. 7,240 days of asking whether or not that dude actually said Jill Sandwich. 173,760 hours of Albert Wesker insisting on wearing sunglasses at night. You're almost old enough to buy a bottle of whiskey to go with those green herbs, Resident Evil. May you shamble for 20 more. What's fascinating about Capcom's self-described survival horror game that launched a genre is how many different forms it's taken over the years. Foundational classics like Super Mario Bros. 3 and Halo Combat Evolve get remastered and touched up in editions like Super Mario All-Stars and Halo Anniversary, but the first Resident Evil took multiple forms on multiple consoles from the start. Captain Wesker, where's Chris? Stop it! Don't open that door! But Chris is... What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Resident Evil for the Sony PlayStation. 1996. When people think of Resident Evil, this is the version they think of. There was nothing quite like the first time that CG zombie slowly turned towards the camera in one of the game's evocative cutscenes. The series formula was established here, from the careful item management to the slowly unlocked puzzle box environment. While it looks a little shabby even compared to its other PlayStation sequels, its polygonal monsters and pre-rendered backgrounds look exceptional compared to other 3D console games at the time. The American release was also heavily censored compared to the Japanese Biohazard, including shots of post-zombie snacking bodies to scenes of Chris Redfield smoking cigarettes. Richard! What happened? Oh, Jill. This house is dangerous. There are terrible demons. Ouch! You're wounded! What kind of demon attacked you? It was a huge snake. And also poisonous. Ugh. Poisonous? Richard, hold on! There is serum. Oh no. I should have brought some with me. No problem. I'll go and get it. Thanks. Resident Evil for Windows, 1996. Capcom supported PC versions of its horror games right from the start, but some weird changes made it into the Windows release. All the censored content from Biohazard appeared in the international PC version, but stranger still was the fact that the campy live-action intro was in color rather than black and white. Whoa! What is it? What? Oh! Oh, no! Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you must be from the Bravo team. Yes, I'm Rebecca. Rebecca Chambers. I'm a newcomer. I just joined the Stars Bravo team last month. Well, I'm really sorry. Are you all right? Yes. I'm Chris Redfield from the Alpha team. Resident Evil Director's Cut. PlayStation, 1997. Resident Evil 2 was actually supposed to come out in 1997, but after series mastermind Shinji Mikami decided it was too similar to the original, the game was handed off to Devil May Cry and Bayonetta director Hideki Kamiya, and pushed to 1998. Fans desperate for more survival horror got this remixed version of the original. New costumes for Jill Valentine and Chris Redfield and new background angles like an overhead shot of the Arclay Mansion foyer aren't exactly exciting changes. But the remixed version of the game remixed all of the major items. 
and that made it worth checking out. The original was included as well, with a brand new easy mode for anyone that never beat what is still a dang hard game. This is Brad. Stars Alpha Team. Please respond. What the hell? Is nobody out there? Brad, this is Jill. Resident Evil Sega Saturn, 1997. Poor, poor Sega Saturn. It simply never had a chance. Resident Evil was one of those series that became increasingly associated with the PlayStation in the 90s, even though it also came out on that machine's chief rival. Due to the differences between the hardware, Chris and Jill look markedly different in this version. This is also the origin point for later games' arcade-style mercenary mode. The Battle Game minigame let you fight enemies in a series of closed rooms trying to get a high score. That's something to keep you warm at night, right, Saturn fans? Wesker! Help me look for him, Jill. And don't leave this hall for the time being. Resident Evil DualShock version. PlayStation, 1998. Third time's the charm. Never shy about re-releasing its games as many times as possible, Capcom put out one more version of the original to coincide with the 1998 release of the PlayStation's first analog controller, the DualShock. This Resident Evil did have one notable addition to the actual game, a fully orchestral soundtrack replacing the synthesized music from earlier versions. It also came with a bonus disc of pre-made save games, so you could play in a variety of ways. Game Boy Color, 1999, unreleased. So it could only display 56 colors and 40 sprites on the screen. Who cares? The Game Boy Color was awesome, so why not shove a version of the original Resident Evil on there? Capcom hired the London-based developer HotGen to make a port and make it they did, cramming in almost all of the content from the PlayStation version of Resident Evil, save for a few items. They even planned to add new enemies and a quick save function, but Capcom killed the project. Beta versions of the game actually made their way onto the internet in 2012, so curious fans can play this lost, strange artifact today. Hey, Brad! Where the hell's he going? This way. Resident Evil Remake, GameCube, 2002. Arguably the pinnacle of classic puzzle-based survival horror games, the GameCube remake of Resident Evil is effectively a different game altogether. The mansion remains, and the Stars Task Force from Raccoon City still have to fight zombies there, but the game was expanded dramatically. New areas were added, items were shuffled, and a whole side story involving the ghastly Lisa Trevor transformed the well-trod PlayStation version into something new. Added mechanics actually made the game harder as well. Zombies couldn't just be shot, they had to be destroyed by stabbing them in the head with single-use daggers, or burning them using a limited supply of oil. If they weren't properly disposed of, they'd return as sprinting, jagged-toothed crimson heads that could kill you even quicker. Is that you, Jill? What's going on? How come you look so scared? Look at this. Resident Evil Deadly Silence, Nintendo DS, 2006. Resident Evil celebrated its 10th anniversary by finally releasing a portable version on a Nintendo handheld. The DS remake includes a touched-up version of the original that incorporated mechanics from sequels like Resident Evil 4, which has a devoted knife button for slicing up zombies in close encounters. It also had the Rebirth mode, a remixed version that added in DS hardware-specific puzzles and fights, like first-person knife battles where you slash zombies on the touchscreen, or blow into the microphone to heal fellow STARS members. Me, Chris. Rebecca. That sounded like Moonlight Sonata. 
Can you play? Resident Evil HD 2015. 13 years after it hit GameCube, Mikami's glorious remake got a wide release on nearly every contemporary gaming machine from PlayStation 4 to Xbox One, with a widescreen, high-definition upgrade to the visuals. While token additions like new costumes for characters don't distinguish HD too much from the 2002 remake, the new control system certainly does. After two decades, Resident Evil HD finally did away with the awkward tank-style controls and replaced them with full three-dimensional control of the character. More than a cosmetic change, the new control scheme actually speeds up Resident Evil, making it easier to avoid enemies and less frustrating to explore cramped environments. If you enjoyed this look back at the Resident Evil series and the original Resident Evil, catch more videos just like it about all kinds of different games by following GamesRadar on youtube.com slash GamesRadar.